essentially what I do is use an infrared uh, microscope instead of a light microscope. So um, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm looking at cells and tissues in a different way with a different kind of light. And I can see all kinds of differences as far as the cell's biochemistry that relates to the condition of the cell. And the idea is to be able to, uh, to tell what the changes are, how, what they correlate to, whether the cell is healthy, whether the cell is sick, uh, whether it's cancer, um, whether it's preparing to divide. These are all the things that we're looking to be able to, to tell. And by looking at these pattern changes in the pattern of the spectra that we get. So I could show you a little bit here. Um, generally, what we see with our eyes is just the visible spectrum, the visible light. But there's a lot of other wavelengths of light that we can use to study things. And so what I'm using is the infrared region, which is right here, which is right next to the visible region. So we don't actually see the infrared light, but we feel it as heat. Different chemical bonds will absorb infrared light in a different way, depending on what the bond is. And so it'll absorb different wavelengths of light, and we can measure how this light's being absorbed. So what we'll do is uh, put something in an infrared microscope or an infrared spectrometer, and instead of getting out what we would for like a digital image, which is a pixel of light, which would be a color, what we get is actually a spectrum for each of our pixels. So that spectrum is telling us how all of the chemical bonds that are in that particular um, little pixel region are absorbing infrared light. So then we can correlate this for looking at cells and tissues with the components that are inside the cell. We have protein, nucleic acids, carbohydrates, and all kinds of other molecules in the cell. And so in different areas of the spectrum, we have different contributions from each of those species. So when we're looking for changes, the most important changes that we see are in the nucleic acid, which is the RNA and the DNA region of, of the spectrum, and the protein region of the spectrum. We don't know quite all what all these changes mean yet. We're still trying to figure this out but we're able to see differences in the patterns. And when it's all taken together for a cell, we get different spectrum that look kind of like this. Okay, you can see that, you can see right now that we can see some differences just with our eye. But a lot of the differences that we see are so subtle that what we need to do is to train computer algorithms to be able to distinguish these changes so that we can also make identifications between different cell types as well as conditions. So to do that, what I will do is put uh, a sample of a cell, uh, a slice of tissue. This happens to be a slice of uh, lymph node. And this lymph node was taken from a patient who had bladder cancer, which they'll often do take um, surrounding lymph nodes to see if the cancer has left the tumor and has moved to other parts of the body. So what we're going to look for is tumor cells that are in this lymph node. So initially, when I take an infrared scan, what I'll see is this just shows me the changes as far as how thick the tissue is. But I take those tens of thousands of spectra that I've gathered from that little piece of tissue, and I'll put it into the first analysis, which will look at every single spectrum and compare it to every single other spectrum, and I'll break it down into what they're most alike and what they're least alike as far as each other, and then create classes. And then what I do is say, OK, looking at the architecture of the tissue, how many classes of spectra do I need to see in order to be able to identify a particular tissue, maybe, that I want? And so in this case, I was able to use uh, five classes. So I used the algorithm that was created that told me that I have five classes of tissue in my sample. So then I can take all the spectra, that, and now they're all tagged for the classes that they're in, and I put them into another computer algorithm called, um, oh, and by the way, where it's red here, that actually corresponds to where there's tumor in the, uh, the lymph node. So cancer cells have come from the bladder, gone to the lymph node, and started growing in the lymph node. So then I put it in what we call an artificial neural network, 
and you can train an artificial neural network to recognize patterns. So I tell the artificial neural network, here are thousands of spectra, and we have five different kinds in this sample, and these are uh, class one, these are class two, these are class three, etc. And then it goes through and it finds uh, a way of classifying these so that I can now use um, what the computer has learned to identify other tissue. So I've trained the computer to identify these five different classes. So then once I've done that, I can take another piece of tissue. This is just a piece of, of bladder biopsy and I can scan it. And once I've scanned it, and I have its tens of thousands of spectra, I apply the algorithm I just trained. And the algorithm is picking up the metastatic cancer that's in that particular tissue sample. So this is one thing that we can do. And it's, it's still in its infancy, and we're still trying to work out how to do all the classifications and what all the possibilities are. But what we can do is maybe identify a particular kind of cell or tissue. Is it healthy? Is it behaving normally? Um, are they preparing to divide? Because most cells in the body don't divide on a regular basis. So this tells us something if we see a lot of cells that are dividing. Are the cells sick? Do they have a metabolic illness, a viral illness? Can we tell this? Um, are they responding to a medication? If they're sick and we give them a medication, can we see changes that uh, correspond to the cell um, getting better? Are the cells cancer? Can we take a patient's uh, cancer cells and treat it with all kinds of chemotherapeutic agents and tell which one is going to be specific for that patient and for that particular cancer before the patient's even given the drug? Um, are the cells dying? There are times when we want them to die, like if they're cancer cells. There are times we don't want them to die, like in nerve injuries. So these are all the things that we are looking to, to be able to identify using this technology. Well, as the technology improves, our ability to, um, to gather the data will improve. Also, as computing power improves, our, our ability to um, work out the analysis, because analysis is rather time consuming. It takes a lot of computer time. There are times when I am training a a program to, to do something and it takes three days to, for it to just go through the cycles of training and that's pure computer time. So there and as more people are working on this and in, in different areas you know our data will come together and we'll be able to uh, learn more about what it is that we're seeing. The other thing is that cell biology still is a field that is still learning about the cell. So we may see changes and not know what it means, but the cell biologist may not know what it means either. So all these things can come together and, um, you know, I, I guess you could also imagine a kind of a Star Trek sort of scanning you with a handheld device uh, one day.